But we're really lucky to have uh, Oracle's CIO here today to talk about how Oracle indeed eats its own dog food and the kind of uh, systems that they deploy throughout the large, large enterprise that they run. Uh, in addition, we're lucky enough to have Wim Kogertz, uh, Oracle's Senior Vice President of Linux and Virtualization Engineering here, who also happens to be a Linux Foundation board member, to talk about how Oracle is working on some complex challenges around Linux and virtualization to meet these incredible demands that uh, Oracle and their customers are seeing out there. So I'd like to welcome Mark first. Mark, come on. Up. Well, good morning. Um, it sounds like I missed a fabulous party last night. So if you invite me back, make sure you let me know about the schedule of events beforehand. Um, what I'm ta going to talk about is, you know, being nimble. And being a big company and being nimble isn't always the case. I've typically only worked for really big companies like Motorola and Texas Instruments, actually in their largest years. And now at Oracle, you know, we're 125,000 folks. And we've been pretty nimble for a company our size. But we weren't always that way. If you look back to our history, um, we were pretty darn complex. We grew up quite decentralized, not by line of business, not by function, but actually by geography. So we had lots of different business systems. Our data was fragmented and didn't have a global owner and had a hard time answering questions. We had over 20, 20 platform OS combinations and 40 data centers kind of scattered around the world and hardware from every single supplier. And so as a result, we didn't have the information we needed to really be able to make um, gl quick global decisions, but also we didn't look like one company to customers. If you were in a different region, we looked different. If you we were different products, we looked different. So about a decade ago, we totally transformed how we think about the world. You know, we went from highly decentralized to the extreme other and really focused across everything we do how can we simplify? How can we standardize? How can we centralize and then automate? And so we took this really across everything. So where we used to have distributed organizations for all sorts of different processes, whether it's you know, legal and procurement and finance and so, but also for IT. So we have one global owner for a given process area, a given functional area. We consolidated our data centers, standardized our telecommunications infrastructure, really did the tough struggle of how do you really have one view of all your data. And then uh, focused on other things like standard applications and shared service centers. If you're going to do something, in a, why don't you do it one place and do it really, really well? But the big thing I want to talk about today is one been a core to our success, and that is really standardizing on a platform. So about 10 years ago, we really came up with, well, what can we do in order to have a platform that can meet all the different needs that we have? including performance, reliability, scalability, and security. And Linux was that operating system of choice. It was our platform of choice across a wide variety of things that we're doing, whether it be our business systems, how we run our organization, how we build products, and also how we provide services to our customers. So from a business perspective, we're about 125,000 employees. Um, I have folks in 49 countries, but we do business in nearly 100 countries. Um, and everyone depends on Linux for everything from how you do you know, your core collaboration and email and manage all of your data to analyze data. We have um, how we service our customers via my Oracle support or Oracle partner network, um, Oracle, <clears throat> Um, and the, the, the kinds of things that we run also, varying workloads, whether they be OLTP or OLAP, everything that we do across a wide variety of different uses is done leveraging Linux. From a product development, um, we used to also have this problem that, you know, we were about 10,000 developers 12, 14 years ago, is how do we do that more efficiently? And so over time, we've put, so our common development platform, which is uh, over 40,000 environments, 
um, all running on heavily virtualized Linux servers that allows us to develop our products with development locations all around the world. And it's uh, one of the first implementations, certainly at Oracle, of cloud. By that I mean on-demand provision of pooled resources that are scalable, widely available, and we can really see what's going on. So we have what we call the Oracle farm for building our products. And then, additionally, I don't know if some of you all know, but we provide a lot of services for our customers, whether it's managed hosting of the wide variety of Oracle products where we'll run your Oracle ERP systems for you or your Siebel system or PeopleSoft, but also we have software as a service. And these offerings you know, span industries, span geographies, from small companies to some of the largest companies in the world. And so, once again, the needs for the reliability, scalability, security uh, for a wide variety of uses has been really key. And Linux is the standard platform we use for supporting over 6 million end users in 4,000 environments. Um, and so, to help us do this more effectively, one of the things that Oracle uh, started doing a number of years ago is, well, how can we build on top of Linux put together all the components necessary for providing a complete service. For example, database. So instead of buying servers and storage and putting the networking between and layering a file system and a database, putting all that together and combine it with a lot of flash so we can build based on commodities so we can have excellent value but also by engineering it all together with high speed and fan band backline, how can we make it unbelievably fast? And once again, it's built on uh, Linux as the absolute basis of what we're doing. And so, and core to what we do, uh, once again, across supporting our internal business, supporting our product development, and supporting everything that we have our customers. And now we're scaling up leveraging integrated Linux into the systems that we build. So our strategy as a company for over a decade is how can we provide complete, open, integrated solutions to our customers? So we've made about 100 acquisitions in the last eight years, all along that vision of how do we pull together the components to make IT easier for our users? And then the key for us, though, is how can we engineer all this together? And Linux has been a core element in helping us accomplish that. And so what I'd like to do is uh, invite Wim to the stage. He's my um, supplier of uh, our Linux and virtualization technologies. Welcome, Wim. Thanks, Mark. Good morning. So we've come a long way since uh, we started using Linux over a decade ago internally. Uh, we've really tackled some of the reliability, scalability challenges. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about the evolution? Sure. So um, Mark here is my biggest customer, and his team is my biggest headache. <laughs> um, when, when we look yeah, at supporting... But you're not sounding very customer friendly right now. Uh, Where's when, lunch, at yeah, least? Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's been great. So, you know, Oracle internally obviously uses a lot of, uh, a lot of Linux. And, and as we support external customers in, in terms of sort of volume and size, we're probably our own number one customer. And, and I think that, that's helped us in, in figuring out what, uh, what to focus on and what to do. Now, I don't want to speak too much to that timeline and the things that Oracle has done. I think what's important here is, is sort of how Linux has evolved the way we, we see it at the company. And, and so the, the, the first thing that, that where we really, aside from porting our products in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s, the first thing that, that we uh, started looking at was Linux was in 2001 or so still relatively immature. Right? We, we, we run on all the Unix systems, 20, 30 platforms at some point, way more than that. And so as we went to deploy on Linux within the company and we started to port the products, there were a number of features missing in the operating system because it was still relatively young. And so one of the things we did in the early days was we had this laundry list of 20, 30 items that we, we knew we had on Solaris or AAX or other platforms and we assumed should be part of, of any operating system that we could, could fully support. So the first thing that, that we saw happening in Linux in the server space was 
get Linux sort of more up to speed on where the, the other platforms, where the Unix platforms were in, in the early 2000s. And so we did that together with, with uh, quite a few of the partners. And, and so Linux and the server space kind of started, started growing up. Now, once we hit that point where sort of the base level was done, people started deploying a lot of Linux in, in, in the companies. A lot of production systems were uh, coming up. But the one thing that we noticed early on, and, and some of our largest customers um, faced this problem as well, was we had done a lot of work on making our software run really well but we hadn't done a lot of work on making our software along with other stuff work really well. So here somebody's running a database, then they're doing a backup at 2 a.m., and the database runs perfectly fine, backup kicks in, an hour later the whole system crashes because the buffer cache couldn't handle large amounts of file over the files and doing a backup of that while the database was still running. And so we ended up with a, with a, a first wave of, of sort of customer complaints on, well, it runs well until something happens. Right? And so sort of the second phase of, of uh, our in, in involvement in this, and, and, and at large, pretty much all the bigger companies in the Linux space, was to, to kind of make Linux more stable in sort of these, these corner cases, fringe cases of production use. So then the third phase for us was more in, in terms of support, where we made the uh, somewhat controversial in some groups' uh, opinions, uh, decision to support Linux ourselves. So we are effectively a Linux distribution vendor, as, as probably many of you know. And, and the main reason for that was not about you know, competing with someone else. It was really about, you know, we, we live in this world where it's all mission critical, right? If you do a credit card transaction or you go to you know, Amazon or any time a big company goes down and the back end goes down, they make the news. Right? And a lot of these companies actually have our technology in the back end. And so we need to make sure that our stuff stays up. And so we figured in the, in the mid-2000s that if we can provide support for the stack, it's much easier to help our customers. We get the first call. If something goes wrong on the database with the operating system, then, then it's much easier for us to deal with the whole stack. And so that's sort of why we got into the, into the support business. And, and, uh, and we learned a lot um, doing that. And so then the next stage of that was, you know, we're doing support, we've, we've done some stabilization on the operating system, uh, was testing, right? And, and I talked about this last year at LinuxCon in, in Prague. I'm not sure how many of you here were in, in Prague uh, last year, but it's not just about development, right? When you pr produce a product, whether it's the kernel or a, a distribution, development is the cool part. Bug fixing and QA is the less cool part, but very critical part of developing a product that you give to customers. And so we put a lot of emphasis on, on QA. And um, I'm lucky that way with having Mark's team and, and his system. So we have thousands of servers that are running other product QA. So I just dump my stuff in his farm and you know, off it goes on four or 5,000 servers every day. And so we have a really extensive QA farm. And so when they find bugs, they report them to us. We hopefully can fix them. Uh, and so life goes on, Linux get better, and, and uh, uh, stuff like that. So, so that was sort of the next phase. And then at that point, so in, in you know, 2008, 2009, I think we were at a point where Linux was pretty much caught up with the other Unix vendors in terms of functionality and features. And one of the cool things between then and now, and, and obviously continue going forward, is the, the development model for Linux, right? It's very rapid. Um, whoever contributes and whatever new feature gets added basically is available to whoever wants to provide this as a service to customers. More traditional development implies longer release cycles. So you can, you can be working on something that won't see light of day until two, three years from now. And so Linux has been very convenient um, and useful to us to get support for latest hardware, to get newer features in the hands of customers much sooner. And one of the reasons that we ended up um, basically providing our own kernel on top of the distribution, which is sort of deviating from the, the earlier model, uh, was to make sure that we could get this new technology into the hands of our um, customers much sooner, right? So that's been sort of the evolution of, of how we've seen it. And, and most of this has been driven um, by customer demand, right? We have lots of customers. They yell at us, have escalations every day. And they basically guide us into a direction that, that we, we know the platform has to go to, to evolve. And the previous speaker kind of mentioned the same thing. It's the user that defines the platform. And, and in the Linux space, we're kind of doing the same. 
you know, being the CIO, and w what I'm really concerned about all the time is with these mission critical apps about how can I make sure they're reliable? How can I make sure they perform? What's going on to ensure that we have this focus on improving performance and reliability? Yeah, I think I, I sort of briefly touched on, on the QA part and, and, and I'll hammer on it again. I, I think it's, it's one of the most critical things. Um, a lot of developers on, on Linux um, have access to smaller systems, you know, they do development on their laptop or desktop and, and then, you know, does this also work on bigger systems? And somebody needs to make that, that effort happen and, you know, companies like Intel and, and even IBM and, and, and others, I mean, certainly us as well, do a lot of this type of uh, testing at a larger scale. Now, one of the things that we've been talking about internally um, in, uh, for quite a while now is uh, we need to have sort of a, a test suite for the operating system that it almost ships with the kernel source, right? And, and either it's a, it's a tar file with test suite that are alongside the Linux kernel or something that's embedded in the source tree. I'm not sure which of the two would make the most sense, but I think it's important to start building test suites for Linux features along as the kernel develops. In most traditional development platforms, or product development, the developers are writing code, they're also writing some basic unit tests, and then there's a QA team writing bigger test suites. In the Linux world, we don't really have that. We have the distribution vendors that have their own test suites in-house, but then somebody writing code in, in Kenya, you know, Dan Carpenter in my group works in, out of Kenya, uh, you know, he's in a, on his laptop, and Chris Mason's right there laughing because he, he uh, knows Dan well. You know, he, go, he works on his laptop in a coffee house and then uploads stuff when he's done. Well, he can't run test suites, so somebody has to do it. And I think one of the things that we, one of the things that the Linux community should, should focus more on, on, on a little bit more, I think, is this sort of making test suites more accessible to everyone else. And that will, in the end, help the product uh, get much better, much faster um, as well. Well, you know, now we're using Linux across a wide variety of uh, applications from mobile, web-based, uh, cloud, and so forth. What are we doing to help adopting the technology to more and more uses? Um, our focus is definitely larger systems. It's probably uh, a lot of fun, you know, these big systems in your data center and you can play with it. Um, so, so we've definitely focused on, 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 on larger platforms. And, you know, hardware keeps evolving rapidly and it's, it's almost difficult nowadays for operating systems to keep up the same pace. And so, you know, we're, we're basically doing this, this benchmark that's displayed on, on the top of the screen. It, uh, it's, it can be on other hardware as well, whether it's an HP system or a Sun system, it uh, doesn't matter. But a 4U box, that big a system doing 5 million transactions per minute, it's just unheard of, right? I mean, we have these small boxes that have incredible, incredible performance um, built in there. And, and it's really cool to work on that type of environment and make it perform really well. And they're doing these sorts of benchmarks while a lot of people always sort of shrug it off as saying it's not real world. It really pushes the system, the entire box. So it pushes the operating system to survive days and days of full load, full workloads and they pull the plug on the storage and all that stuff and it needs to recover, right? And so a, a certain part of benchmark work is actually very relevant to, to finding issues with operating systems and, and use that data to make things better and not just as a marketing slide to say, hey, this system infrastructure is better than another one. So there's actually a huge amount of value to doing benchmarks. And the other thing is, is you know, it's Linux is unique in running on your mobile phone and running in your car and running on the biggest servers, right? I think it's just fascinating that one source tree can, can work across all these devices and, and it's, uh, it's amazing, you know. 20 years ago, I don't think anyone would have thought that it would be even possible to have one product that can fit in so many areas, but Linus pulled it off by being who he is <laughs> and, and pushing you know, developers into doing it the right way and not compromising, right? And so I think that's what, one of the reasons that Linux is so great. And so you mentioned uh, that you know, at Oracle we have our own distribution and then the kernel. Could you touch a bit more on that? Um, so the base Linux distribution is really about support, uh, making sure that you know, our customers have somewhere to go um, when, when serious things happen. Um, what, what we've learned in the last few years, I'm not sure if Greg uh, is here, Greg Cage, um, but five or six years ago, um, Greg was complaining that um, distribution vendors focus on ancient stuff and that it's not good for, 
for the Linux kernel in, in terms of testing and, and forward development. And he really was trying to push the Linux distribution vendors to be more current and not sort of live in the past and backport stuff. And as we were you know, just doing Linux support and uh, starting to look at larger systems, we realized that actually he was right, <laughs> uh, surprisingly, right? Um, and so we started doing more stuff that was current. So we, we, we actually provide a, cust a kernel to customers that's more mainline based, that's six to nine months behind uh, what Linux uh, is really as the mainline kernel. And it's helped us a lot because if you stay behind four or five years and you backport stuff, then you're unique, right? Because there's a lot of code difference. And, and SUSE has been doing the same thing. They're very current with the, with the kernel they distribute. So in many ways, it helped us. We basically said, look, we don't want to spend time on looking at code that's unique in the world and that only one sort of um, distribution runs. Um, because when we fix bugs there, then the Linux community doesn't really care because they're diff it's different code. It doesn't really, it's not really relevant. And so if we're closer to, to what Linux maintains, then we have new hardware support sooner, we have newer features sooner, we can sort of follow this rapid development of the kernel um, following new hardware. So we can be more competitive to other operating systems um, in, in that sense. Whatever we find and whatever we test helps a larger group of people, not just us. Um, and we don't sort of you know, waste our time doing old stuff. And, and in fact, one of the things that we've learned is often when bugs happen in sort of the, the more traditional model, they're already fixed in the mainline kernel, even security bugs, right? When a security router gets released on something that's three years old, it's already, there's 50% likelihood that was already fixed. So we're spending a lot less time doing old stuff and we're focusing on you know, fixing you know, six to nine months behind Linux is stuff, which helps the kernel get better and better. So the more we do this, the more SUSE does this, the more everyone has a stable mainline kernel. And hopefully more people will start doing the same thing, right? So it, it sort of helps everyone. And that's sort of what we learned and uh, certainly helps us a lot. Um, so this is, uh, you know, this sort of what we've been doing. Um, so now that Mark's here, I would like to ask you a question along with a lot of the audience here is sort of, where do you think we should focus on more? Well, of going course, a broken record. <laughs> Faster, better, yeah. cheaper, more reliable. I mean, that's all the things. Make it take advantage of all the hardware features. Allow us, you know, we're using it for a wide variety of uses, as I mentioned, and of tremendous scale. So make it so we can do this as well as we possibly can. Once again, it's the fundamental core, the fundamental platform for us running our business and you know we need to, to be there for us. Well thank you all for joining us here today. We really appreciate it. Um, thank Wim for coming up on stage with me. And if you have any questions, uh, we have a booth. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you.